As you know, or you're probably watching this video, uh, Sanjay Mortimer of E3D passed away a few days ago. Everyone's trying to figure out his cause of death, but you know, a legend in the 3D print community passed away. I met Sanjay. He wasn't too impressed with me. Uh, we had a disagreement about uh, hot ends, including the fan. I think his business partner, uh, Josh, was there. Felt like he, hot ends should include a cooling fan aimed exactly at the nozzle as a complete unit. So when you design or you build a printer, everything's just ready to go. And it adds to like universal, let, allowing the hot end to be more universal. One less thing to figure out. Anyways, this is this video is not about that meeting. It's more about the the final thoughts. Final, one of the last comments that Sanjay left on social media on YouTube. I was watching some interviews of him in the past two or three months. So, you know, he, he had some wisdom. You know that he left and sound like maybe he was bothered by something now i don't want to speculate on the cause of death that this comment means something else there's already people saying that though there's a lot of people saying that the, as many people are saying it it's getting deleted and it doesn't mean you know could have been a car accident you know before this moment passes on before we move on from this in a news cycle in a 3d print community news cycle i think it's good to reflect on one of his final comments on vector 3d's youtube page and we're going to go read it together share your th thoughts in the comments section if it wasn't for sanjay i would not have gotten into 3d printing like i did if it wasn't for his e3d v6 hot end his documentation um i had a lulz bot my first printer was a maker bot my second printer was a Lulzbot. The MakerBot was trash. The Lulzbot jammed a lot. It was, it was a lot of headache. I bought an E3D V6 hot end. Now, keep in mind, I'm a noob to 3D printing. I really wanted this to work. So I bought an E3D V6 hot end and figured out how to get it mounted on my Lulzbot Task 4. And if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for Sanjay, if it wasn't for the documentation, who knows how many people would have not entered the 3D printing hobby. It might still be, you know, a Mendel Max, for example. It might still be way different than it is today. So he's definitely made an impact in the 3D print community. He will be missed. His energy will be missed. Um, and I just want to get that out there before you read the comment. All right, so here we go. So, uh... I'm watching videos of his final interviews, uh, and uh, this this comment stuck out at me. It was coincidentally one month ago. The channel's Vector 3D. It's a pretty good channel. He's more of a 3D print builder than one of those I call them China Review affiliate link channels. So we're gonna get into it. And remember, this is just a comment left on social media. It doesn't. We don't know the context this was left in. We'll go into what I think. Um, triggered that result response but let's get into it not all physical physical disabilities are visible not all people have neurotypical minds some genetic differences cause both when we talk about neurotypical a lot of people use that in reference to autism or ADHD I I researched this because that runs in my family so uh, I already know kind of what he's trying to say right there. Diversity of mind is why you possess the underpinning tech to watch this video. A competitive dash to electric transport is underway and we have a fair chance of colonizing Mars. You'd be shocked at how many aspects of your 3D printer were conceived by neurodivergent people. I can actually agree with that. I think um, you know, people who are kind of eccentric or a little bit strange and strange is relative. They're not strange to me, but they you know, creative people typically aren't your people that are going to go to the bar and talk about football or whatever. So that includes the prevalent E3D V4, 5, and 6 style of all metal hot ends and myself. The greats weren't great because at birth they could paint. The greats were great because they paint a lot. I wasn't born with a magical hot end design wonder gift. I'm blessed and cursed such that in almost every waking moment, my mind is involuntarily consumed by thinking about hot ends. I love hot ends so much that patient, kind people, members of Team E3D are appointed to make sure I remember to eat, drink, and take my medication. Otherwise, I collapse and have seizures. Outwardly, it makes me seem uh, more than just a little quirky and eccentric. Physically, it means that standing up upright for 12 hours is totally unbearable agony, which needs to be controlled, too. Revo isn't just me, far from it, but I am proud to say that we have an awesome team brimming with neurodiversity, not just in Revo engineering team, either. Anyone in at Team E3D knows 
this is just straight up almost too honest representation of who I am all day every day and we're gonna we're gonna touch on that what he means by that because I think I know what he's trying to say I'm hell bent on improving the ability of humanity to manufacture goods the ability to use tools to manipulate the world around us is one us is one of if not the most defining features of what makes us human I can think of nothing better to dedicate my life to I know that you're probably just having fun in good faith I know I'm a bit of a character and for sure enjoy having a bit of a camera persona but it pains me that on multiple videos where I'm in agony but so excited to be announcing what I hope are valuable contributions to manufacturing that I put on a smile and do my best but I can only do this in my quirky little eccentric way after the show I spent two days at a hotel resting near the event because it was so draining and painful once done sleeping I get on YouTube nervously excited to read what people think in the comments this is the first comment years of work by a team of incredible people pushing themselves to the limits overshadowed by this s word again my heart sinks and someone was cutting my heart sinks and someone was cutting onions or something I feel like I've let my entire let down my entire team my heart sinks and someone was cutting onions or something okay I guess he's saying that he was crying without admitting that he was crying I'm not sure the first proto-humans to fashion and use a tool probably got mocked by their peers too for being different. In relative terms, I expect they'd be considered neurodivergent too. I like to hope and think we've evolved a bit since then. And there's several comments uh, praising him. Um, and probably, you know, we can read all these. I thought I was P-Hub for a sec when reading this because it sure is a melt. Yeah, that's the thing, the 3D print community is full of weird, can I cuss? I mean, am I allowed to cuss? Weird assholes, They're fucking dorks, like, trying to one-up and, you know, jealous and any anything technical, where's the webcam on this thing? Anything technical, any field with moving parts, whether you're in engine repair or IT or uh, 3D printing, you get a lot of these know-it-all assholes, they're always trying to be funny, it's not funny, they're just like jealous is how I see it you know RC cars was another one there's a lot of these but you know the context you know this was written a month ago it sounds like he might have had a physical ailment maybe that is why he's no longer with us we're, in, we're still in you know the the thing that came from China um, I don't want these videos to get demonetized or you know buried in the algorithms so I don't even know what to say but we don't know um, it, it's clear to me though you know he was struggling with something for sure I mean obviously he, he wrote this and he wanted people to see it um, when you watch the video he uh, I wouldn't say he's acting weird uh, you know he just he's just a fun guy he seems like he's high energy you know but people are accusing him in the comments and we scroll down he had to scroll down I don't know how these get to the bottom well they are worthless comments um, People are accusing him of being on something or that he's got issues. Well, anyways, before I drag this video out, there's people in the comments accusing him of being um, on something or that he was under the influence of alcohol. Um, you can see he's grabbing himself right there. So, you know, I, the reason this, this, uh, I'm making this video, I should go into some detail. I was always considered a weird kid at school. I sat at a lunch table by myself. Um, I always had a gift. If I wanted to be good at math, I'd just be good at math. Um, when the, if math class was boring or I didn't like it, I'd tune out and I'd get Fs. But if I had to study again or I had to want to impress somebody, basically, let me turn this uh, video down. I could suddenly just be good at math, algebra, um, science, all those you know more STEM-like things. But I was mainly a loner, uh, a D plus C minus student my sense of humor is kind of dry sometimes maybe a little bit dark uh, I don't find going through life when you're like a smart type person you shouldn't you're not supposed to admit those things but you do see a difference in yourself to other people and if you don't develop a cavalier attitude is what I call it just having a cavalier attitude towards society it will consume you when you start to develop a cavalier attitude or maybe even a sense of some some kind of superiority kind of an ego 
to shield yourself from these kind of people. Like I said, I don't go to the bar and talk about football. I don't uh, that that bland, empty conversation talking about people chasing the ball or the kind of things people talk about, like their coworker didn't show up and cover their shift. I can never really get into that stuff. I don't get into sports. I also don't get into Star Wars. So I can become an outcast. And for a long time, comments like what he's referencing would hurt me. They would definitely cut at my soul. Only when I started to get a little bit older, um, start recognizing that I was talented and I had gifts and started to really understand people. I, I want to say it like that, that you did discover that these people, they can't comprehend what you're talking about. They don't, they don't, they're not in your shoes and they don't have your mind to process the extra detail that you're processing, if that makes sense. You know, I don't want to speak on behalf of this guy. His, his comment, let it speak for itself. I'm just saying I relate to what he's saying. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. I relate to this mindset. Um, I don't know what his real afflictions were or if that's even related to why he's passed. But I think he wanted it out there. I think he definitely put some time into this. You know, this isn't a fly-by-night comment. It's well written. He, he, he took time to make it right. And, you know, like I said in the previous video I made yesterday, or I guess you'd be seeing them all at the same time. If it wasn't for his... Uh, E3D, I wouldn't have got into 3D printing. I wouldn't have done anything. I wouldn't make these videos. I've spent 20 or 30 grand over a few years, literally, not figuratively, not, you know, exaggerating, investing in 3D print stuff from heavy duty aluminum extrusions that came on a semi trailer. They were 12 feet long. Not a joke. Um, don't do that, by the way. Don't buy whole sticks of aluminum. Don't do that. But yeah, uh, I don't even know what I was saying. I'll have to watch this. I'm rambling now. See? All right, guys. I'm going to end this, end this here. Rest in peace, Sanjay. Thank you for your, your innovations and your character. All right. I'm done. Rest in peace, Sanjay. E3D team, sorry for your loss. And take care. Bye-bye.